we get started, just uh, uh, to comment about this, this situation I'm personally dealing with. And uh, I had uh, at least three or four conversations with uh, Shad. You know, messages loud and clear, and I agree with. Um, also met with the uh, team on Monday individually and then today. Uh, had a very uh, pointed conversation with them. Uh, owning a stupid mistake that I made. Uh, and that uh, the job of a coach is to, number one, health and safety of a player. Number two is motivate him and bring out the greatness in him. And number three is uh, give him everything possible to be successful and have a great locker room. And then get the heck out of the way. And I apologize for distraction with a huge week coming up, uh, especially after they played. Made so much improvement from week one to week four. So that was the conversation. Why, um, why an individual? I wanted to get in their space and uh, you know, have a good relationship with this whole team. And uh, I'm not a big team meeting guy. I'm more of a, I do a lot of it that way where I'll go to you know, the running backs where there's a group of four. And I'll, you know, team meetings are very, uh, you know, it's just a big environment. And in my opinion, you don't get much done in a team meeting. You get a lot done when you're in personal space with people. I've always done that. I mean, have you heard from the league office? No. Have you talked to? You haven't talked to Goodell. And then, were you were you fined? As part of the reprimand, were you fined no. by Todd Conn? No. no. Okay. Coach, did you um, ask permission or was granted approval to not fly back with the team? I'm sorry. Well, did you ask, like shot? Did you? Was it okay for you not to fly back with the team? Yeah. Uh, well, I discussed it with uh, Trent. Way in advance. Reaction to you not going back in. I mean, you stood at that podium in Cincinnati and you said you had a heartbroken team. Do you think that taking left back on that consideration that might not have been a good thing to do? To not fly back. Um, I thought at the time, you know, now that I maybe thought it through, but I thought at the time this is a chance for everybody to clear their head, including myself, to with uh, my family located uh, you know, where we were to go spend a, a day or two with them and then get back because I knew I wanted them to get out of Dodge too and clear their heads. Urban, can you expound on something you said on your radio show last night about the players having ownership of the team? What is, can you describe more what that means to you and how that impacted this week in particular? Well, players always own the team. In college, I consider that the same way. There's nothing more important in a locker room. And when I uh, the context of that is it's my responsibility to uh, earn their trust back as their leader, as a guy that I'm very close with, a bunch of them. And it's, a, it's always been that way with, with our teams and organizations. This is a player's team. It's a player's organization. Our job is to direct them, but they're the decision makers in an organization. So I've all felt that way. So how does that impact you this week in particular when you have a crisis situation, distraction, whatever you want to call it? How does that, what do you expect from the team then in this week? Well, I asked them. I mean, that's the part of the getting personal and, you know, I'd say of our leadership committee, I had at least, you know, eight to ten phone calls even with them where they called me and they were over the top supportive and said, well, we got you, man, we, we move forward. You know, a common thing was, Coach, we all did stupid things. And uh, I was really impressed with our guys. At, uh, at any point over this whole last few days, uh, did you ever feel distraught enough to consider resigning at all? No. Do you feel like uh, the distraction has, will or could take away at all from any of the preparation for yourself or for the team going into Sunday? Well, I'm in a fight to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. As of now, no, I don't see that one bit. How much will a win this week sort of help the morale a win will, uh, uh, you know, the, I, I'm dealing with this personally, but the win, as far as the organization and the team, will do wonders. What's your relationship like with Coach Rabel and what kind of coach is he? Oh, a great relationship. Great. Uh, hired him back in, uh, what was it, 2012. Actually first met Mike when he was with the uh, Patriots, and I was invited up there a couple of years in a row to, uh, uh, to watch him at minicamp. Um, he's from the same area, he's from Northeast Ohio. And uh, 
Luke Fickle, when I hired Coach Fickle as our D's coordinator, he had recommended Mike. Mike had only been coaching one year, uh, never coached the D line, and uh, he did great for us. Obviously, a good football mind, great worker, uh, great family. Uh, just I'm really close with Mike. Urban, have, you, have people outside of the team reached out to you to offer support or, or anything, other coaches, guys that you've coached yeah. before? Hundreds, yeah, they've been great. Shelly, you talked about how your family's mad, angry. Is is Shelly at all understanding that this is a mistake and you can, you know, you guys have obviously been together a long time, getting because it's fixable, but it's you can move on. I believe so, and that's obviously that's very personal. I don't want to get into our personal life, but uh, 37 years we've been together, and it's been awesome. And uh, and uh, the speed bump's not going to get in the way of that. Derrick Henry, obviously, he's a uh, quite a beast. You guys, the run defense has improved from previous seasons, but what have you seen from him so far this year, especially knowing their top two wideouts may be out? You know, I actually coached against him in uh, one of those bowl games. Uh, he is a monster. He's uh, mm -hmm. one of the best combinations in size and speed. You know, he starts. Everybody says it. You know, I remember I was with Trent. We we're watching video, and we can't let him get started. That's much easier to say. And I, I think. Uh, I'm sure Derek would say that. I'm not really ready to interviews, but their offense line is really good, and uh, their scheme is really good. So uh, that's, this is a really good offensive team led by one of the best players in the NFL. How difficult is it game planning, knowing potentially you may not have Julio, A.J. Brown out there for the Titans, maybe somebody else, maybe a different-looking receiver? Well, I was talking to Shaq about that, Shaq Griffin today about that, and that's you got you to gotta plan as if they're playing. You know, the, it's like uh, going up to – bat and expecting a curveball and they throw you a fastball. So you, you expect a fastball and uh, react to the curveball. You talked about the, the progress this team has made from week one to week four. And it's evident, I think, for everybody. But what do you, what do you seen that you're most proud of that they're doing better? It's a, one of the best locker rooms, if not the best locker room I've ever had. I mean, the halftime, the energy, the pulling for each other, the fact that you know there's been some guys lose a bunch of games. and. I mean, the fight, man, you, you're talking about going in that environment last week, our quarterback, just the poise and the growth he's had. The Schottenheimer, the coach Schottenheimer and Bev, I think they've done a great job. The game's starting to slow down for him a little bit. We're combining the spread along with more traditional NFL, which is a lot of where his comfort is, uh, which is exactly what my envisioned when back in year, uh, months ago. So there's a lot of, you know, the, the team's very close. You know, the reality is we had two really bad injuries, too, of guys. A.J. Cam was playing very well, and D.J. was just coming on. And, and so someone's got to pick up the flag and go. So, you know, I, I told the team today, I love the team. This is, this is a good group of dudes, man, that uh, work hard, and I believe in them. And um, our staff believes in them. The, the work ethic and energy from week one to week with new systems, a bunch of new players that haven't played together, and a young quarterback. Now you look at week four, that first half, you, you know, I do that plan to win, which I haven't done much with you guys. I used to do in college all the time. The plan to win was a perfect plan to win. All the teams 18 yards rushing, 100 yards passing, 30 on the first play. Our quarterback was sensational. Guys are making plays all over the field. The tight end comes in on three days earlier and makes an impact in the game immediately. Our offensive line, uh, I want to say all five graded winning effort, uh, which is that was exceptional. Second half was uh, and that, that's back to back now twice where second half we've come out and we're outscored and give up a drive and we got some critical errors that we got to get fixed. Nothing to do with effort. Nothing to do with a chemistry issue. Got to fix a couple uh, some errors we made against Joe Bur Joe Burrow got hot. So a lot a lot of positives, but we just got to win it game and, and finish and I believe in these guys how do you many teach defensive it coordinators like many defensive coordinators Joe Cullen obviously harps first and foremost on stopping the run yeah. is this game on Sunday sort of the ultimate mano mano type of game because of Derrick Henry and because of his physicality and all that yeah it's strength on strength we're pretty good against the run and they're I don't know where they're ranked in the league but they're I would imagine they're tops in the league in run game and with that big dog back there. So, uh, yeah, this is – and that the, the area we have to get better at is the boots off of the run. You know, we had a couple uh, mental errors in the game against Cincinnati. 
We can't have that this week. The quarterback does a nice job of flying. First of all, he can run it, and second of all, he finds the open player. The combination of the run game with the play action, they're really good. You mentioned having to get the team to finish a game. Uh, this team looks like they've improved each week, and you're finally knocking on that door, and last week they just didn't close it out. Is that something that you can teach a young team? I mean, this is a team that hasn't won a game in a while. Do you have to learn how to win? Absolutely. Uh, you, you look, there's, there's, I try to find the bright spots to talk to our team about, and you look, and the reality is that the Cardinals are one of the best teams in the NFL. They're undefeated. Uh, they're playing at a high level. There was at one point we had them, we should have been up uh, 21 to 10. And playing it, you know, playing hard for our home crowd. And, and, um, um, and then the second half, you know, it, it's, it, I'm looking at conditioning, but I don't believe it is. I'm looking at uh, mental errors, that's what I'm seeing. Do you think it's that guys just want to win so bad? I think Shaq mentioned that, you know, everybody wants to win so bad that some guys are just freelancing a little bit, trying to make that big spark play rather than just doing their I've job. Had, I've had that comment to me because some of our better players are making a few mental errors and it's certainly not that they're not capable. I think they're trying to put it on their shoulders to go get to make the play. Where is uh, Josh Lambeau mentally? Pretty good. He's pretty good. He's, uh, we're going to, uh, him and uh, uh, Matt are going to, there's going to be a, a little competition to see who kicks, but Josh is a much better place right now. So if he doesn't win that competition, is, is there, is he gone at that point or? I hope not. Um, I like Josh Lambeau. I like the, his uh, commitment to being a great player. He's in, in a slump right now, but there's also the reality. The reality, you got to put it through the uprights. And we're all pulling for him. I can tell you this, the whole team's pulling for him. Um, he's a great guy that works his, you know, what up. What do you mean to see from LaVisca now with DJ out? LaVisca's been our best, most productive guy. He's turned it like he was a, a gadget player a year ago. He came out of college, was kind of that gadget player. He's a, Sanjay's done a really nice job. He's a legitimate route running wide receiver right now. I think he had six for 90 some yards last week. Ideally, I met with our staff too. He, to me, he's a 10, because that 10 times, I would like to see that ball in his hand. And um, there's creative ways to do that. He's playing at a very high level. Okay. And he's been healthy in our, our whole sports performance model that we, that's, Guys like him have thrived with it. What have your conversations been with Trevor this week about things that happened on the field, things that happened off the field over this last week? Yeah, he's been great. Um, um, first of all, about the football component, his comfort level, he's, you know, he's really, his relationship with Schottenheimer and the fact that Shotty and, and Bev have had experience developing a young player in the NFL and in the personal situation, Trevor and I got a great relationship and he was great. He's, we, we, we talked it through. Are you still, cons I mean, obviously, you know, 0 and 4 and then these distractions for a young man like that. I mean, he only turns 22 today, um, that that can get to him eventually. Yeah, I mean, he's a very unique, you guys probably know him a little bit. I know him very well. He's one of the most unique people I've ever met. And I heard that about him from his coach when we were discussing it. I studied him before we drafted him and he is a, uh, it's so refreshing to be around a guy like that. His focus and his resolve is tremendous. Thank you. Last thing I'd just like to say also to uh, the 904 and Duval and our owner, you know, I, why did I decide to come out of what I was doing and do this? Uh, our owner, I just became, you know, uh, admire the guy so much. He's become a friend. He's a guy that I, like I said, I just admire uh, Jacksonville. I know very well. I know our fans have been hanging in there with us, and I apologize to them. And I uh, want to make that perfectly clear. Thank you. Okay.